In this tutorial, we are going to create a sporty text. Hello and welcome guys, Armagan Videos here and in this tutorial we are going to create a sporty text with Adobe Illustrator. Why sporty? Because this kind of style is often used in eSports, basketball, football and many other sports and it's generally used within masked logos. We are going to create a vector logo but a little side note to vector based logos later in this tutorial, it's very important make sure to watch it. If you are enjoying this video make sure to comment, like and subscribe so I can see that there's still interest in these tutorials so I can continue with making them and yeah. Without further ado, let's jump right into Illustrator. So there we are in Illustrator. Let's click on new to create a new document and I'm just going to make it full HD resolution. Leave everything as it is and color mode RGB color, then hit create. And there we are. So let's press T to get our text tool and actually write Vikings. Now I'm holding down shift and clicking on this up arrow to create a larger text or make it larger very fast. And now let's change our font to KBSF Recon Regular. You need to purchase that font and now click on character and set the kerning to around 200. So just like this. Now let's center it in our document so it looks nice and easy. And let's select our text and you can press S to get the shear tool or click on here, shear tool. And if your text isn't tilted like my text already, make sure to tilt it a little bit because this gives a very sporty character. Just like this, hold down shift so it doesn't wiggle around really crazy. But I'm going to revert this because my text is already tilted. Now go to object, expand, so it gets out of this text state where you can edit it and the letters get transformed into a real shape or get a path. Now next up, make sure to select the text again and right click ungroup so each letter stands for itself. Now let's grab a guideline. If you don't have these guidelines, make sure to press command and R and make sure to set the first guideline to the very end of your first letter to the very last pixel and the second guideline to the very beginning or the very first pixel of your last letter. Now select them both and hold down shift and scale them up and now you can see why we've created these guidelines. You can now just drag them while holding shift uh, to the guidelines and they are perfectly adjusted, no messing around with the kerning and everything looks good. Now select all of these letters, press Ctrl G or Command G to group them up. Now go to Effects, Warp, Arc and this window will come up and we're just going to give it a horizontal arc of right around 6% or let's see how it looks. Make sure that preview is enabled so you can see it live. And yeah, I think 6% is the perfect setting for this. Now let's select this, go to Object, Expand Appearance, so we got our text in Paths again. Now let's go to Object, Path, Offset, Path, and now this window will come up, make sure to hit preview again. And let's try to play around with the offset a little bit. We want to have a continuous shape all around our text and the expanded shapes or the offset paths should actually intersect with each other so we can merge them together with the pathfinder in some seconds and everything should be looking good. So I think 37 should look good as you can see right there. So let's hit okay. Now let's select our shape right there, go to ungroup and only select these back layers that we've just created by offsetting the path. Make sure to hold on shift so you can select multiple shapes. Now go to window, pathfinder if you haven't got this already and make sure to press the very first icon to merge them. And as you can tell there are these little three dots so make sure to get the pen tool or press P and create a shape right around these little three dots. Select this shape and our background shape and let's merge them together so we get one solid continuous shape. Now select the shape, go to right click, arrange, send to back. Select everything and deselect the background by holding shift. And now you have just the letters, group them up and make them white. Now hold down alt while dragging this shape down so it makes a perfect copy of it. Also make sure to hold down shift and alt so it constrains its proportions while you are making it smaller. And now make sure to select the background shape right there, go to the blend tool or press W, click on this shape and on our newly created copy and as you can see it blends in between. Now double click on the blend tool and you get these blend options, make sure to change it to specified steps. And if you're now typing in like 60, you can see how it interpolates between those two shapes and creates many copies. So let's make like 80 so it's really 
strong right there and if you're now selecting the copied shape and drag it around you can see it adapts to it live which is really a awesome feature and i wanted to align with this shape right there so it makes a perfect line just like that and this looks really three-dimensional already now select all our shapes except the vikings text and go to object expand and hit ok and now you can see all the single layers that got created and just make sure to merge them by clicking on the first icon of the pathfinder and if you're now selecting the background shape right there you can give it a specific color so it all looks good and you are ready to go with the cool effect one thing though if you're zooming in you can see those little staircases or stairs that got created during the process of blending in but make sure to grab the pen tool select the very lower anchor point and the upper one and make sure to drag shapes around this and this won't be the only edge or stairs right there so make sure to continue with this process for all these jacked edges right there as you can see there's another one and let's zoom out and check for another jacked edge or stair yeah, there's one on the left, so just repeat this process. Pen tool, drag out a shape that includes all of these stairs and drag around it. Now zoom out, make sure to select all our shapes, hold down shift and deselect our text and unite all of these shapes so you get one continuous shape again. Only thing left now, right click, arrange, send to back. So why should you always create logos in a vector based format? Many people are actually cloning my tutorials from Illustrator to Photoshop and I don't really care, but the problem here is it's the wrong message. You should never really create logos in Photoshop except the client project forces it because maybe sometimes they want a bitmap image like a real image in their logo Logo, that's a different case but generally you shouldn't create logos with Photoshop. A vector logo offers you a lot of advantages for example the scale or the quality because vector logos are based on maths which you can scale very easily by just multiplying it you have the option to scale up your logo or scale it down to whatever size you really want without losing any quality and uh, yeah that's one of the biggest point actually to use vector based logos. Vector based graphics are industry standard and they can be printed on nearly everything while many printers don't even want to accept files straight out of Photoshop so if you can't deliver a vector based file and yeah you're just putting yourself into a very tricky situation if they want to print different stuff and yeah you're probably going to lose money or have twice the effort to kind of create that logo that you've created in Photoshop uh, again in Illustrator and you're maybe even going to lose a customer or a client so make sure to always go with vector based graphics if you're working with logos so and a little addition to this text right here make sure to drag it down so you can see what we are doing let's spice it up by going to object expand offset path again make sure that you have the background selected and this time let's give it a offset of around 20 pixels now make this white and as you can see it gives it a very nice and sleek border and it really adds to the design and all you need to do now is draw a mascot on top or anything that you want and you're good with the logo and if you enjoyed this tutorial make sure to leave a comment like and subscribe and also comment down below what you've liked or what you want to see in the future and uh, yeah until the next tutorial armagan videos